Bill and I met at Northwest Missouri State University um, when we were college students, and he was a handsome baseball pitcher, so I just started following the baseball team, and we got married soon after that and moved into a trailer and started our family. When I met Dale, um, I think I just knew right away that he was who I wanted to marry because he just made me feel safe. And he was just solid, just a solid rock. And uh, besides that, he was pretty funny. But, and he liked to be funny, so. Um, he was somebody who hardly lost his temper. Um, he was somebody that had wise words and he was a really good dad. Dale and I had spent our lives being teachers, so we um, enjoyed just the school activities and being a part of the community with the school, and we were both teaching at Maryville um, and just nearing retirement. So when Dale died, we'd been married um, 30 years, almost 31. Uh, he was 51 years old, so um, it was, kind of came out of the blue. We didn't expect it. Um, he had had a previous heart attack, but he'd been, we thought, taking pretty good care of himself. So um, we were hoping we were going to beat the odds, but um, it just all happened really suddenly. So when something like that in your life happens that suddenly, then um, it's kind of like starting over again. Dale and I were going through some uh, planning to move to Platte City so we could be with our kids as soon as we retired. And um, so the plans were already kind of in progress. It was something we talked about a lot. And so after he, he died, um, I would come on the weekends and I would stay with my kids and started going to First Baptist with them. And I just remember the flood of support that the church gave um, to particularly Amanda and Zach um, who were going to church here and I just felt really welcome and so it was really easy for me to come to church here so I would come here on the weekends and started going to church here and meeting people and after teaching one more year um, I retired and I moved to Platte City and bought a house and um, now the whole family's here at church, all going to church together, and, and I just feel like the Lord's really worked in that to bring us all here together. I think as Christians, we just, we say what we believe, but whenever we lose somebody, then we have to decide, am I gonna really believe what I've said I believe? Do I really believe? Um, that I can be content in all circumstances. You know, those are just, those are things that you have to just decide you're gonna believe. I just also remember thinking, if I don't believe that this is all true, what are my kids gonna believe? You know, if they, they have to see me be able to um, really live what I believe. If I fall away from my faith, who's going to fall with me? And so I, I think one of the things that I had to, you have to also grieve is, you know, your kids losing their dad. That means so much to them, but also it was really hard watching the grandkids come and see them grow up and see that they don't even know what they're missing. You know, they don't have any idea what they're missing. So. Um, I'm really happy that my kids make it a point to make sure that their kids know him, you know, through stories they tell and things that they do, and um, that makes me happy. Grief is like starting a whole new life, and there's a lot of things that stay the same, but there's also, you've just got to rebuild everything, um, so you don't just lose the person you love, you also lose everything that goes with it, like feeling like you're at home and feeling the support that's there with you and the person you go have fun with and the people that do, does the other work around the house. 
So those are all things you lose too. Those are called secondary losses. So you don't realize how much you lose when you lose someone um, besides the person themselves. So I think the first thing you have to go through when you're grieving somebody is um, being able to accept that that person's gone from your life. But then after that, there's a lot more work to do. You know, just just making your life something that you want to live again and enjoy. What led me to Grief Share was that I had somebody that asked me that had also lost a spouse and she, and I knew the days after that Dale had died that the people that came in the door that had experienced the same loss, there was just something about that that brought um, a peace to my heart because I saw that they were able to um, live through it. And so I felt like I, I could too. I don't know, there was just a strength that came from that. You know, one thing I've learned from grief share is we all grieve differently. So for some people it's, um, it feels good to be able to talk about it. And for other people it's, it's maybe too hard. But um, for me it was just a place where I knew that I didn't have to keep up the pre pretenses and I could um, join a group of people and be able to just sit with them and feel the grief. You know, instead of just moving along with my day and trying to act like it wasn't there. The Grief Share videos gave me experts that on grief to listen to and also um, people on the videos would share their stories of what they had been through. So we were all going through it together, new. So I think that made it helpful too. One of my very favorite things about Grief Share is when I see other people in the group start to encourage one another and it happens all the time and um, so there's just a natural thing that happens where people start communicating and sharing and talking um, after they've been there and got to know each other a little bit so um, whether you come and talk or not you're gonna benefit from it but it's it's a chance to minister to, to to other people or to help other people in the group that are going through what you're going through. So I think we tend to avoid people that are grieving because we don't know what to say. And I, th I know that they appreciate you just acknowledging their grief and not having the right words, but just not being afraid to join in, join in it with them. You can't explain grief. I mean, it's just something that if you haven't experienced it, you can't know, and that's that's a good thing. But um, when you get around people that you don't have, feel like you have to explain it because you know they're feeling the same things you are, um, then that that's another benefit of grief share. So you don't have to be a Christian to be able to feel the comfort from others that are there, and uh, you don't have to belong to our church to come to grief share, um, but you may here's some things that might encourage you. There are two parts of Grief Share that I really like. The first part is just learning to walk day by day to do their next thing, you know, to get through the, that day and, and to try to be able to see God in all that's going on around you and what you're doing and to be able to just notice that He's there with you and to draw some support from that. It talks about rebuilding our lives. We talk a lot about our hope in heaven. You want to have the hope for the future knowing that things are all going to be okay and knowing that someday you'll be reunited with your loved one. But also just your day-to-day -day life knowing that you have something to get up for when you get up in the morning you know because God can give you hope for today and for you to be able to see that you do have a purpose still. That there are things for you to do. And, and you know, that's one of the things about Grief Share that I hope, I, I'm, I'm praying for people to join me in this ministry because it does give you hope. When you go through your day, you try to just keep pushing through and it makes you so tired, you know, and it just, and everybody thinks you look so strong. And Grief Share is the place where you can come and you just, don't have to put on those those pretensions and you don't have to pretend about how you're feeling 
you know, I, I think Christians can tend to kind of think, oh, I, I shouldn't need help. I've got God. If I was a good Christian, I wouldn't need to be supported by other people. But grief share is something God provides for them to be able to um, strengthen their faith again. Yeah, one of my favorite sessions in grief share is on lamenting. And lamenting is when you have the tough conversations with God. And, you know, what the purpose of that lesson is to let you know that it's okay to do that because it's showing that you're, you know, God is there. It's showing that you know He's in control. Um, and He, and He has a lot of grace for those questions. And so when, when we lament, that's one way I think we can get closer to God. And, and that's why it's probably one of my favorite lessons that we do in the book. I think the thing that I mentioned first to people that have just lost somebody is just to take it one step at a time, one day at a time. Don't think about what's coming. Don't think, it, you know, don't think about two days from now. Just think about what you're going to do the next hour um, because God's going to be with you in that next step, but you can't see it right now. So you just stay right in the moment and do the next thing. When I first started Grief Share, one of the verses that I based it on was 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we may comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. 